It's time again for another Photoshop tip with Alex Lindsay from Pixel Core. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. All right, now what are you going to show us today? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about converting uh, color photos into black and white. So now most people will, will if they want to convert, you know, for, they'll go into the image mode and change it to grayscale. You know, but you, 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 but you do not suggest doing that ever, ever. So, 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 for instance, <laughs> and I'm just going to desaturate uh, this image here like this. Okay, so well, that looks perfectly. It looks fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it, <laughs> you know. But the thing is, is that it's 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 a little bit of a dull look for a black and white image. One of the reasons you use black and white film is so that you can get a richness that doesn't occur in the you know in, in color. You get this really really high contrast, or you're able to highlight stuff, and and you're not going to get that, um, you know, doing it doing it with just by just taking the color out. So the one that was just added to CS3 is called black and white. Ah. And this one, it starts normal, but and this is no preset, but now you can start working with different filters. Oh, nice. And it's going to find, you know, you can start to find other uh, solutions here um, that might work a little bit better uh, than what you had before. Now, you have also a lot of control over how these different colors affect your um, your end product. So you can go in here and you can move and this is really giving you kind of laser control. If I start to play with this here, it gives me kind of a bit of laser control over exactly how much uh, yellow for instance or red uh, or other colors um, really you know uh, add to the to the actual image. Now another way if you don't have CS3 yet and a lot of people don't, um, you can also go in, the one that I like to use a lot is in fact I'm going to do it the way I like to use it, which is not to do it permanently, but do it down here as a layer uh, adjust adjustment layer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the channel mixer, and this is a this will create a layer above the channel mixer here. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to monochrome, and now I'm going to start playing with this. Now what I'm going to do here is this is going through each channel. And it is um, able to use different amounts of that channel as they add up to the grayscale layer. And this gives me a lot of control over creating something that maybe I think is a little bit crisper, a little bit more contrasty, and, and you know, might show off the person that I'm, that I'm uh, you know, looking at a little bit more effectively. Like I can really affect how each channel is, um, you know, is affecting the, the process. Now, so let's say I get something like this, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I sit OK. Now, this is what I had before. Oh wow! And this is what I have now. That's that's a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, if you go, that was that was if you just did the desaturation. If you do desaturation, or you just convert it to grayscale. That's what you're going to. Until get. you see it, it it doesn't look that bad. But when you do the, exactly. when you actually, it actually does pop out. And you can, and, and a lot of times, depending on the color image, you're going to get all kinds of. Uh, you know, there's different areas. Sometimes you need a little bit more green. Sometimes you need more red. But you're now able to use that full color image, which is essentially what was happening with a black and white film. Is it was using the entire gamut and squashing all of that back into, into black, black and, and white. white. And so you're able to get something that looks a lot better. Now, the other thing that you can do once you go down this path is you can also make your your original image, this one here, um, look more uh, a little bit more contrasty. So, for instance, you know we can go in here, and once you've done this conversion, I can set this up to maybe, for instance, just affect the luminosity um, of the image below. And uh, and what I well, this has made it pretty punchy here, but but I can uh, or I can go into uh, soft light, and this this is adding more information. And I'm going to group this. this. Is the reason it's there? We go. So what I've done here is I group this channel mixer to this to this channel here, and by turning this on and off, you can see how. One thing to notice is how it looks a lot more like film. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're looking at this, is what I've done is I've taken this black and white image here. Oh, and you overlaid it on top. And I and I I overlaid it as a soft light back on my original color image. Now, do that one show the contrast. That so that show the original photo. That's that the was original the original photo. photo, and that is with the black and white exactly that you made on top. That's, that is truly I mean, I mean, you really don't get a sense of it till you actually right. see it. And, and once you start getting used to it, you know, this is one of those things that as you start using this to either pep up your color images or um, actually, uh, you know, create great black and white images, uh, once you get used to this look, you'll never go back to just, oh, I'll just change it to grayscale or, oh, I'll just do some levels. Uh, you know, this, this gives you a, a much more film-like look oftentimes. All right. Thank you very much, Alex. And if you want to see Alex's previous Photoshop tips, just go to our website, dl.tv. Hopefully, Alex will be back in the near future with even more amazing digital imagery wizardry.
And thank you, Alex. And again, if you like what you see, send us your suggestions for Photoshop tips you want to see.